Hi, I'm Lisa Sarajian, Analytical Manager with Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Department. Welcome to Credit Matters TV. Standard & Poor's recently published a report that highlights the top 10 investor questions for the global real estate sector in 2014. Here to talk with me today about some of the topics explored in that report is George Skoufis. George is a director and senior analyst with S&P's corporate real estate team, and he follows a wide range of companies that operate within both the commercial and residential real estate sectors. George, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. So what is our credit outlook for U.S. REITs in 2014? Sure. Um, so our, our outlook for, for U.S. REITs is positive and stable. And but what I mean by that is generally we think most re ratings will remain stable, but we do think that there will be a positive bias uh, potential for our ratings or our outlooks. Um, and the backdrop for that really was we start off with our base case uh, economic analysis, which uh, or forecast rather, and that, that basically assumes you know, an improving economy uh, coming off of a tepid growth in, in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, the major factor would be GDP growth of about 2.6%, also factoring in lower unemployment um, and continued continue improvement in, in consumer sentiment. We think all those factors will support continued demand for real estate um, to support REITs uh, stable to improving occupancy. Um, supply, while there are a few pockets of, of supply that are, are somewhat of an issue, generally uh, is, is under control. We think the combination of those two factors should support uh, the REIT's ability to continue to, to drive rents a little bit higher mm -hmm. um, and generate some modest uh, organic growth in NOI. Development generally has been uh, remained under control within the REIT portfolios themselves. Uh, we think that that will continue to ramp up, but they'll continue to really look to pre-fund that, those development expenditures uh, with equity, asset sales, as well as a combination of, of, of using some debt as well, but continuing to, pre to preserve their improved balance sheets and for some REITs continue to maybe see some continued strength. Uh, in their balance sheet and credit metrics. And they also face fairly manageable debt maturities in 2014. Okay. How about the rated home builders? Similar to the REITs, we also have a positive to stable outlook there as well. Um, generally, I think most of the ratings, again, there will remain stable, but there is potential for some uh, momentum in some of the ratings and outlooks. Um, despite the fact that we saw a recent pause um, in home building demand over the back half of 2013, we do think that supply demand fundamentals will remain favorable. Again, similar to REITs, the improving economy will help. Uh, home prices, as well as uh, mortgage rates, while higher, still remain relatively attractive. And supply, again, is, is, is uh, fairly low, on a, whether you're looking at a month's uh, supply basis mm -hmm. or overall uh, construction starts relative to historical levels and household formation. So we think those factors will continue to support um, the home builders that we rate in terms of growing their market share and improving their profitability. Mm -hmm. Why maybe we're not more positive is we have seen uh, builders really fund their growth with uh, a greater share of debt, mm -hmm. which has slowed the improvement in their credit metrics relative to the broader improvement in, in their revenues and earnings. So we'll be watching that very closely in 2014. And obviously, it's also in the early stages of a recovery, so it, it is sensitive to potential headwinds, as we saw uh, over the last several months. Mm -hmm. I guess you touched on capital needs for both the REITs and the home builders. Maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Sure. Um, both sectors, I would say, have done a fine job in terms of managing their debt maturity profiles. So they've you know, kind of gotten ahead of them, and they entered 2014 with manageable debt maturities. They both, in terms of unsecured debt, it represents about 6% of their total debt. For REITs, about $7.5 billion. Uh, home builders, about $1.5 billion. So from that perspective, they're in, in good shape. REIT capital needs, um, are probably going to center more around their ramping up development pipelines. Mm -hmm. So we've seen those ramp up and we can expect that to continue. But we would expect them also to continue to uh, pursue that uh, in either a leverage neutral manner and also pre-fund as much of that as they possibly can. Acquisitions are a little more difficult to, to uh, forecast, mm -hmm. but we would expect them to continue to look to enhance their portfolios through one-off or portfolio acquisitions. And again, um, fund them prudently and generally in a leverage neutral manner. Mm -hmm. Home builders, their capital needs are uh, definitely lumpier, uh, generally centered around their land uh, investment needs. Mm -hmm. And we continue to expect that will be robust in 2014 as they continue to invest in land acquisitions, development, and home construction as they continue to uh, um, work through the recovery mm -hmm. stage of, of, of housing. 
Um, so we think that they're going to spend more than they actually bring in in terms of cash flow. So what we'll be watching closely will be how do they fund that growth. What we've seen to date has been funding that with a, a majority of debt. Mm -hmm. So we'll want to watch how, how they fund that growth in 2014. And, and again, as I mentioned earlier, that will be a factor that kind of factors into their uh, potential, you know, whether we mm -hmm. think there's positive range of momentum or not. Mm -hmm. Do we see rising rates having an impact on either sector? And is this an industry that's vulnerable to ongoing budget uncertainties? Um, as far as interest rates go, um, clearly we all expect rates to rise. Um, the, the Treasury announced that they're going to be tapering, mm -hmm. uh, so we expect rates to rise. As I mentioned just now, though, their debt maturity profiles are, are manageable, so we don't think that there's a risk from maybe a refi perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where rising rates may have an impact. And again, I don't think it's necessarily on their ratings, but I think they'll have to watch their, their investment activity a little more prudently. So as, as if their cost of debt is rising, obviously you want to, you know, as you're underwriting, whether it be a REIT underwriting a, a real estate deal or a home builder investing in new land, mm -hmm. um, you have to factor that into your, into your uh, underwriting and, and make sure that you're generating the proper returns. Mm -hmm. As far as budgetary concerns, um, obviously congressional leaders recently reached across the aisles and came to an agreement, mm -hmm. uh, which was um, which was a, a, a positive, I think, and, and our economists think that's a positive in, in overall for the economy. Hopefully, that can also extend to the debt ceiling, mm -hmm. which will remain a lingering concern that wasn't addressed um, through the recent, recently announced budget agreement. You know, we generally expect that that would be resolved as well. Obviously, there are larger ramifications to not addressing the debt ceiling. Um, for REITs, we don't think maybe a prolonged argument over the debt ceiling mm -hmm. would have a material impact on, on their ratings. Home builders, the concern would probably center around if, the, uh, if this was prolonged and ran into the spring selling season yeah. where that could impact a very crucial period for them. With, with the spring selling season really drives the full year performance. So mm -hmm. again, we don't expect that to play out that way. It's not part of our base case, but that's mm -hmm. a risk to maybe our home builder ratings, or at least our outlook, if, if that were to occur. Okay, great. Thanks for these insights, George. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. For a more in-depth analysis, please see our commentary, Top 10 Investor Questions for the Global Real Estate Sector. For Credit Matters TV, that's it for now.